So good afternoon, everyone. So as Natalia said, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, the ASA standard scenarios and uh, how we plan to, to structure them and some words about the, um, the, uh, the standard scenarios that we are uh, drafting. So, uh, does it work? Oh, does it work? Ah, okay. So why standard scenarios? I think at this uh, stage, uh, everyone uh, knows uh, why. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, in the specific category, uh, uh, US operators uh, are required to uh, perform a risk assessment uh, to derive uh, the right uh, limitations and uh, mitigation measures. And as you could see this morning with the uh, presentation by, by uh, Lorenzo, it can be a quite uh, painful uh, process. And also, as uh, he mentioned, uh, there, there are uh, many operations out there which can fit within the same uh, uh, limitations and uh, apply the same uh, mitigation. So uh, definitely, uh, the, uh, the standard scenarios are a way, an instrument to facilitate this process and uh, relieve uh, uh, U.S. operators and competent authorities from this uh, burden of uh, uh, authorizing uh, o operations. So it has, as it has been mentioned, these uh, standard scenarios are uh, an acceptable means, means of compliance to this uh, requirement for a risk assessment to be performed by the uh, U.S. operator. And these uh, standard scenarios already include a set of uh, limitations and provisions to mitigate the, the risk. So uh, these uh, these uh, limitations and provisions has been established uh, by uh, performing IASA or or an external entity and, and uh, reviewed by us. So uh, we make sure that uh, uh, these um, these provisions and limitations are the the right ones. So the standard scenario uh, actually provides this this baseline for conducting the the. Um, the process of, of authorizing the, the operations. Also important, as it has been mentioned, is that these uh, EAS standard scenarios will be uh, European-wide, so applicable uh, in all uh, member states. And as I was mentioning be before, uh, these are basically a frame that is op operational risk-based, So, which means is that we uh, build this uh, scenario taking all the elements that contribute to the risks and we are not directly de deriving uh, the definition from uh, the, the use cases or, or applications. So uh, also as uh, indicated by Natale, the, the, uh, mm, how we uh, build these uh, standard scenarios depends on a number of priorities, but of course, uh, main point is that these uh, are relevant uh, for many operations or operators uh, across uh, Europe. So what does uh, an STS uh, contain uh, in the ASA uh, standard scenario that we are developing? We include, uh, as part of the element on operations approval and conditions, uh, we indicate, we establish whether this uh, standard scenario is subject to declaration by the US operator or authorization uh, to be issued by the, by the competent authority. And also it will contain the uh, conditions for, for the uh, standard scenario to, to remain va valid. For instance, we, we will include there also the, the validity time. If it is a standard scenario, for example, under decl declaration, it could be uh, unlimited. But if it is uh, under authorization, it could have a, a limited period of, of validity. And then it will include a set of operational limitations, which are actually the boundaries that define or characterize the the standard scenario, and which uh, may include, for example, elements like you can see there, the level of human intervention covering whether we uh, limit operations to only be uh, remotely operated or whether we allow for autonomous operations, whether uh, we limit to only one drone at a time or, or a swarm, as it was mentioned before, uh, whether um, it can be operated from a moving vehicle or, or uh, we allow, for example, for a handover between uh, control stations. So all these aspects will be included under this, uh, this item. Then we have, for example, uh, range limit. If it is from the remote pilot, it could be uh, VLOS or BVLOS with uh, certain limitations in the range. 
overflown areas, whether uh, sparsely populated, for example, limited to, to that, or, or we may allow uh, operations within uh, uh, densely populated areas, but uh, with uh, certain limitations. Drone limitations, for example, as he was uh, mentioning by uh, Lorenzo this morning in Zora, characteristic, uh, maximum characteristic dimensions or kinetic energy or either uh, uh, maximum takeoff mass, speed, etc. Flight altitude or uh, uh, also in connection with airspace limitations, uh, for example, limiting the, uh, the um, operations only to uncontrolled airspace and uh, possibly other limitations we have included already in our draft uh, like for example the <coughs> forbidding carry, uh, carrying uh, dangerous goods although we, we may allow for example uh, exceptions for for um, phytosanitary products for for spraying for example so these are the kind of uh, limitations we are we are thinking of to define to characterize the 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 scenario and then we have a set of operational provisions, which are the mitigation measures to, to, to have the, the operations within a, an accept acceptable means uh, risk uh, level within these uh, limitations uh, that define the, the uh, scenario. And this may include, for example, the ground and air risk uh, buffers that uh, Lorenzo was uh, mentioning this morning, containment uh, provisions, like for example, uh, limiting uh, or providing a, a, a criteria for not exceeding a certain frequency of uh, the drone is, uh, escaping this uh, operation volume. We will include operation provisions, operator provisions, sorry, including uh, uh, all organizational uh, aspects that should be in place, uh, the, the need for uh, a standard, uh, uh, standard operational procedures, uh, including uh, maybe an uh, operation manual, the uh, uh, emergency response plan, <coughs> all these aspects under, under the operator provisions. Then we will include, uh, of course, uh, uh, remote flight crew uh, provisions that will address, uh, for example, the, the training and the qualification of the uh, uh, personnel directly involved in the operations, like remote pilots or visual observers. And uh, last but not least, we will include provisions, uh, technical provisions for the uh, drones, for the UAS, and any supporting means that uh, will have uh, that may have an effect on the safety of the operations. So these are basically the, the an overview of the main elements that will be contained in the in the uh, standard scenarios. Well, you can see there the. Okay, and how we plan to to structure the standard scenarios. So we initially plan to to include all these uh, scenarios in one single document which will be structured in two subparts. Uh, one uh, subpart uh, that will contain uh, all general aspects and provisions that uh, will be applicable to all uh, uh, scenarios. And then a subpart B where we will include all the uh, different uh, standards and scenarios that we will be producing pro progressively, including all as specific aspects for, for each uh, standard scenario. So the, the subpart A uh, includes the, all the general aspects for all these uh, elements that uh, I have described uh, before, for the uh, operational approval conditions, US operator provisions, that of course also will include uh, these aspects on security and privacy that has been uh, uh, described before, remote flight crew provisions, technical provisions, and uh, some common elements like uh, references and, and definitions. And then in Super B, as I said, uh, it will contain all the set of uh, standard scenarios and all specific aspects that, uh, that pertain to each uh, standard scenario, including whether each of them is under declaration or authorization. And uh, we have a format of a table, including all these uh, uh, operational limitations and, and provisions that uh, all of you that will uh, be tomorrow and after tomorrow you you will see in the in the in the draft scenarios that we will be discussing. And it's important to to remark then that the operator 
will need to take into account when uh, that operator selects standard scenario, not just the provisions and limitations included in, in the subpart B when the, uh, that operator selects that, that scenario, but also the, uh, li uh, the limitations and provisions in subpart A, so the general uh, part, but also the regulation in terms of the specific category, because we are not putting in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, 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 scenario all the requirements of the, of the regulation. For example, we don't indicate there that the operator needs to be registered. So the operator needs to take into account all three uh, elements. And regarding the uh, first set of uh, scenarios, as uh, Natalia was saying, we are firstly uh, mm, going to discuss uh, this uh, generic uh, standard scenario, which is intended for uh, beyond visual line of sight operations over sparsely populated areas in very low level, below 150 meters in uncontrolled airspace and using drones which develop maximum kinetic energy of uh, less than 34 kilojoules and the uh, maximum uh, characteristic uh, dimension of uh, 3 meters. So this is the uh, scenario that uh, JAROS is, uh, has, been, uh, has, has been developed and uh, we thought it was a good approach to base uh, our scenario in, in that uh, JAROS scenario to make the most of the effort being developed uh, there, in which, by the way, we are participating as well, and also take uh, benefit from this uh, wider consultation in, in, in JARUS, and of course the consistency with, with SORA, as this group is also developing this methodology. This is a generic a scenari a scenario because uh, the provisions included there are uh, quite uh, generic, because they are based on the criteria uh, for the corresponding uh, sale, which uh, was described by Lorenzo this morning. So that means that uh, for the authorization, more detailed provisions will, will be needed uh, to, be to be discussed by the, by the uh, applicant, by the operator with the, with the authority. But at least this uh, generic scenario provides uh, a baseline. And then we have also drafted uh, a detailed uh, a scenario, which is derived derived from the generic one, which is intended to be an example of uh, a declarative uh, a scenario. So what we have done is we have further limited the, we have put uh, uh, stronger limitations. So for example, we have uh, limited the, the range, we have reduced uh, the maximum uh, kinetic energy allowed, etc. And we have, uh, of course, included more detailed uh, provisions because in the declarative uh, uh, process, um, there is no uh, interaction uh, with the, with the uh, uh, competent authority. So there is no such uh, discussion. So everything has to be quite uh, prescriptive. So this is in a nutshell uh, what I wanted to, to comment on uh, uh, YASA, uh, how we plan to, to structure, uh, what's our approach. So I don't know if you have any questions.